Today I have the distinct <laughs> pleasure of speaking with Howard Dunn. How are you today? I'm excellent. Thank you, Tracy. Howard, you know, I read your CV, and I have to tell you, it's extraordinary. <laughs> Every once in a while, I get a CV where I'm like, okay, this guy's had contracts with the DOD, uh, NASA. Uh, you've been uh, specializing in process engineering in metals, including rare earths, since it uh, looks like the uh, early 80s. Can you tell us how you got into this industry? Uh, yes, I started processing material for Coors Ceramics, which moved on to contracts with NASA, DARPA, and the DOE, all related to specialty materials that held rare earths. Okay, and I understand that U.S. rare earths are lucky enough to have you and your team working for them. Can you tell us what your role is with U.S. rare earths? Yes, uh, we're the primary exploration and operator for their ongoing operations in Colorado, Montana, and Idaho. I want our audience to understand how incredibly well-versed you are in rare earths. Would you mind just quickly giving us a brief overview of your educational background, please? Uh, sure. I have a geological engineering degree and a, a master's in metallurgical engineering from the Colorado School of Mines, and I'm also a registered professional chemical engineer in the states of Idaho and Colorado. And I read in your, uh, in your CV that you've had at least five years in rare earth extraction or processing engineering. Is that correct? Yeah, I've had, well, more than 20 years in exploration and materials process, and I've been introduced into the rare earths over the last five years through working with U.S. rare earths. So you've been working for U.S. rare earths for the last five years. Can you give us a bit of an overview about where they are today from your perspective? Yes, well, we've been able to prioritize their suite of properties into one lead property, which is the last chance mine. It's a historic mine that is open at depth and length and is rich in europium and has a very special mineralogy to it. Okay, that's where I want you to take me to the next level. What is this specialized mineralogy? Uh, some of the members of U.S. Rare Earths are telling me about dark monazite. They're telling me that they're uh, focused on the phosphor, uh, phosphor uh, uh, market and uh, europium. Help me make this make sense to not only myself but our audience. Um, from metallurgical testing based on stockpile material from historically mined and currently held materials, uh, we came back with some analysis that show that the rare earths or minerals are disassociated from unwanted metals. So this provides an avenue for separating the rare earths. This, these rare earths then occur in a particular kind of monazite known as dark monazite coined by the USGS in 1983. Dark monazite is europium rich and is disassociated from much of the unwanted metals in most deposits. In working on the U.S. Rare Earths pro project for the last five years, you understand some of the advantages that they currently have. We understand, for instance, that they're going to be the uh, they're going to be able to produce from this mine, and that they're already extracting from uh, the tailings. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Of course. Well, we're actually uh, with U.S. Re Rare Earths filed the permitting to get that, and have been ex helping them extract the stockpile, and so. This allows them to be able to be the first company, I believe, in the U.S. to go and extract underground material that is the source for the rare earths. And what is the timeline for this? Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Well, the permit was issued by the U.S. Forest Service in September, and that allows us to start working as soon as the weather clears. Uh, what does that mean? I'm in Toronto where it's minus mm -hmm. 30 below zero uh, with wind chill today. Well, we'll actually be able to get out in the field uh, probably towards the beginning or end of April and uh, begin preparations and be up and start the extraction process uh, in June. One of the challenges that I have when we tell uh, people about the U.S. Rare Earth story is they often say it sounds too good to be true. Now, you've been on the project. You've been working there for, again, five years. Can you tell us a little bit about the infrastructure and how and, and tell us a little bit more about this? Well, it's a very unique uh, opportunity in that we have a critical rare earth deposit that has uh, historical mining workings already in place. It has a unique mineralogy that is high in europium and gives us the highest basket price uh, for a deposit of this type with a very high percentage of total rare earths being that uh, europium. 
We also understand that in addition to this, and of course the timeline to production here, um, that you also have some real uh, uh, geological advantages here on the project. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, well, the, the true benefits are not necessarily geological, but mineralogical in the fact that we have this dark monazite material that's uh, high in europium, which gives us uh, this deposit a very high percentage of europium out of the total rare earths, about 5% or more, which is 10 times greater than the industry average. We also have the ability to separate the rare earths from unwanted materials. And working in this particular deposit area, we also have a deposit that's open at depth and at length with known surrounding occurrences of rare earths that allow us to potentially expand the deposit we're currently investigating. One of the biggest debates that we're having on Investor Intel is actually about the different rare earth uh, uh, extraction processes that the different companies are planning on utilizing. Understand that you have a real competitive advantage. Can you talk to us about this? We have uh, important information that we derive from metallurgical testing showing that with simple me uh, magnetic separation, we can reject half of the mined rock as waste and retain uh, actually more than half and with the approximately 30 percent remaining material we've doubled the concentration of rare earth so this should save us significantly in downstream processing additionally the grinding size can be much reduced well Howard thank you so much for joining us today thank you very much Tracy